finally, the battle that many superhero fans have wanted to see, Thor versus Captain Marvel, and it took place in episode seven of the What If series. And thanks to that battle, well, we've got some scientific proof about who is the strongest. And in this video, I'm going to present that proof. Hi there, I'm Dr. Barry Fitzgerald, the superhero scientist, and on this channel, you're gonna find videos about science, engineering, mathematics, and superheroes, of course, and more besides. And if you're liking this video, well, be sure to please give it the like. Right, let's get into some of the science behind Thor versus Captain Marvel. In episode seven of the What If series, Thor, otherwise known as Party Thor, arrives on Earth with a bunch of other famous MCU characters to have one huge party. This doesn't go down very well with some people on Earth, including S.H.I.E.L.D., and they call on Captain Marvel to step in and end Party Thor's reign of terror. Or should I say reign of party? Captain Marvel arrives in Paris, France to confront Thor and ask him to, well, stop all the partying. Thor, of course, refuses, and this leads to a little bit of a fight between the two. Thor hits Captain Marvel with Milnir and sends Captain Marvel hurtling towards Stonehenge in England. And then when Thor arrives in Stonehenge, Captain Marvel returns the favor and sends him hurtling from Stonehenge to somewhere in Texas. Given that when Captain Marvel hit Thor, he ended up in Texas, and when Thor hit Captain Marvel, she ended up in Stonehenge, there's quite a good indication here that Captain Marvel is stronger than Thor. But you know what? Let's put a bit of science and maths on it. Let's check the figures. When objects move through the air, they move as projectiles. Take the example of Thor. When launched at the start position, he follows this curved path and eventually hits the ground. In this simple example, Thor's motion is limited to two directions, the vertical direction and the horizontal direction. This means that Thor has a velocity in the vertical direction and that he has a velocity in the horizontal direction. For the comparison of Captain Marvel and Thor's journeys in the What If episode, I'm only interested in the velocity along the horizontal direction or X direction. So when I mention average velocity, I am referring to the average velocity along the horizontal direction or X direction only. And what about the angle of projection? I'll take a look at that later on. First off, after Thor hit Captain Marvel, it takes her a mere 8.5 seconds to travel from Paris, France to Stonehenge in England. And I know the distance between Paris and Stonehenge is approximately 400 kilometers thanks to Google Earth. We know that Captain Marvel took 8.5 seconds to go from Paris to Stonehenge, and that distance is roughly around 400 kilometers. And with these two numbers, we can calculate an average velocity for Captain Marvel. To calculate the average velocity, you just divide distance by time. And when you do so, you end up with a number that is approximately 47 kilometers per second. Well, what about Thor's journey from Stonehenge to Texas? Well, it took Thor roughly around 10 seconds to move from Stonehenge to somewhere in Texas, which is quite an extraordinary time because in that time, he actually crossed an entire ocean. Now, the distance between Stonehenge and somewhere in Texas is approximately 7,500 kilometers. And for this calculation, I'm going to ignore the fact that Captain Marvel hits him while he's in flight and just treat it like a single punch. Knowing that Thor took 10 seconds to travel that distance and the distance is 7,500 kilometers, guess what? We can calculate an average velocity for Thor, which is just distance divided by time, and we find ourselves then with an average velocity for Thor of 750 kilometers per second. So there you have it, scientific proof with some hard numbers that Captain Marvel is more powerful and stronger than Thor at least in the universe that was depicted in that episode of What If from the Multiverse of Universes. But hold on, hold on. What about these numbers? 47 kilometers per second? 750 kilometers per second? Wait, what's the deal with those? They sound really, really big. 
So how do they compare then to, well, velocity of things that we know? Let's take a closer look at the average velocity of Thor, which is 750 kilometers per second. For this comparison, I'm going to refer to that as a speed and not a velocity. Don't worry, speed and velocity are related to each other. Speed is a scalar quantity, it means it has no direction and is the magnitude of velocity. Velocity though has a direction associated with it. And if you want to know more about the difference between speed and velocity, check out my video about those quantities and the flash and it's linked above this video. First of all, how does Thor's speed compare to that of the speed of sound? Well, the speed of sound in air is 340 meters per second, which is, of course, really small in comparison to 750 kilometers per second. What about the speed of light? Well, the speed of light in a vacuum is roughly around 300,000 kilometers per second. The fastest object ever built is the Parker Solar Probe, and that is a satellite that is currently studying our sun. Currently, the maximum speed that the Parker Solar Probe has reached is roughly around 150 kilometers per second, which is about 20% of the average speed that Thor travels at when he moves from Stonehenge to Texas. It goes without saying that the average velocity or speeds of Thor and Captain Marvel after they're punched are just absolutely bonkers. I know we're dealing with the world of superheroes, aliens and Norse gods, but these numbers are just out of this world. But most importantly, the stronger of the two in that universe from the multiverse is Captain Marvel. Maybe she's the strongest in all of the universes in the multiverse. And one last thing. Earlier on I mentioned that when Thor and Captain Marvel are punched, they move through the air just like a projectile. And when you send a projectile through the air, there is an optimal angle that you need to start the projectile at in order to maximize the range or the distance the projectile will travel. Let's check if one of them actually used that optimal angle in the episode. As it turns out in the episode, it's easier to calculate this angle when Thor hits Captain Marvel. Here's a blurry snapshot of Thor hitting Captain Marvel in that episode. To calculate the angle that she leaves the ground at, well, it's quite easy to do that. I've just added in a couple of lines here with one that's horizontal and another one that has been rotated so that it lines up with Captain Marvel as she's moving out of the picture. And when you calculate the angle between those lines, well, you'll find that it is 45 degrees approximately. And guess what the optimal angle for a projectile is? Yes, you guessed it, 45 degrees. So Party Thor might have been a bit young, naive, and enjoyed partying more than stopping villains, but he still knew that the optimal angle for maximum range is 45 degrees. So there you have it, scientific proof that Captain Marvel is indeed stronger than Thor in that universe from the multiverse anyway. I keep having to say that. Thanks for watching this video and be sure to subscribe for more videos on superheroes, engineering, mathematics, and lots more topics. I've been Dr. Barry Fitzgerald, the superhero scientist, and until I see you next time, always think super.